Okay, in this video I'm going to show you what I do to set up my files to make it custom and show you how I time things out and use the uh, audio file that we created in Audacity. So I'm going to open up my files. I want to copy a couple. I want to take my tone file that I use. I want to put it in my folder. First track on this album that I'm working on is Sleeping Bag. I'm going to copy my tone in there. There's the OG, OGG file that uh, I created in Audacity with the guitar title. Next file I'm going to want in there is my album cover. So I'm going to open up my documents. My album covers. Scroll down here to the Afterburner cover. This is one I downloaded off the internet in a rather large file and brought it down to a 512 by 512 JPEG. I'm going to rename that to album. These are the steps that I go through in all my customs, so it's just habit to do all this. Those are the three files I want to start with. Now I'm going to open up Editor on Fire. I'm going to create new, file new. And we're already there in the folder. So I'm going to import that guitar file or that guitar track. There's my ZZ Top sleeping bag already entered. I'm going to use the sources audio folder. That's going to create a few more files in here. Some backups, the MIDI, MIDI notes for other games and most importantly a WAV file for the song that we're going to be creating. So when I'm editing I always time out everything first to the whole song and I use those or I use the grid in a quarter note setting as in how I have it set here. This way I can bring up the waveform of the song. I know where the song starts about four seconds in. I'm gonna scoot that chart over there. I'm gonna put my beat marker there and my time signature. I know it's 4-4. Four, four. And I'm gonna scoot on up the track here a bit. And I'm going to line these up a bit. So I'm going to take this out here. To where my twos and fours line up. AK two, four, two, four. So I've got a good little section of this that is timed out. I'm going to go back here and find out. It's a little over 112 on the beats per minute. So here's where Control Z comes in. I'm going to undo that, take that back to 120. And I'm going to come back here. Actually, I need to Control Z again because I want to go completely back here to the very beginning <coughs> of my leading silence. And I'm going to set my beats per minute at 112. Point three, because actually I'm cheating. I did this file last night, so I kind of got an idea of what it's supposed to be at. I'm gonna come up here to that first beat. I'm gonna put my time signature back in, and I'm gonna move everything back to that first drum beat. That should be pretty much on track.
two, four, good there. Maybe just a bit. Track it on down. A little bit of space, there we go. This one was actually a pretty easy one to time out because of a probably a click track that they use in some of the uh, 70s early 80s when a lot of four track recording was done before the great revolution of digital age it's a little harder to time songs out, but it's the same concept. It just takes a little bit longer. It's not really that hard. That's why I go with the twos and the fours. And the reason that is, is no matter how good a drummer is, the hands are always quicker than the feet. So your, your ones and your threes are usually floor toms keeping the beat. And your twos and your fours are usually the hands with snares or the, uh, the cymbals. So it's a lot easier to track on those than it is sometimes the, uh, the floor toms. You know, it's pretty easy in this track. You can see where things are at. Some tracks, you know, people download off the internet. You know, and think they want to make a custom item. Just it's a bigger headache than it is to try and track out a song like that. Because when you download it off the internet, people like to make the song sound the way they think they like it, and everybody else should listen to it. So you know, they add their little enhancements to it, and it muddles up a track for like this. These are all burned. CDs that I've done for my tracks. I've got a couple sources that I use and it just makes for such better tracking and better quality when you burn it yourself. And that is that for the timing. A little bit there. We're going to go ahead and save that. Last thing I want to do, so I'm going to set my intro marker on the first measure. So our intro, whether it be a, a four four like this song or a two four or whatever the uh, the uh, timing is, I always set it on that first measure, whether that's the first beat or not. You know, if you got a 4-4 a four, four and the song starts in the middle, the drum beat start in the middle of that measure, I'm always going to set that marker at that first measure. I don't set it in the beginning like I've seen some people do, and then they try and work things around that. It just makes for a headache later. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run up my difficulty levels. This is something that I've always done. I bring it up to the 32nd level as far as the tabs, which actually gives me 33 difficulty levels, 32 to play with, and one for the master track. So if I want to go in someday and hand edit these, I can do that. Other than that, this is about all I do to set everything up. I'm going to be doing this from a book. There's a lot of good sources out there. I very rarely use Guitar Pro tabs. Unless I find something that's really exceptionally good for a bass line and is really accurate. It's just, there's a lot of editing. 
could be worth it for some songs, but normally I go from books because they're really accurate. Um, old Cherry Lane bass books, um, Japanese band score books. I've got a big collection of them, and that's a lot of what I work from. That's why when I do a lot of uh, customs, I usually do the album instead of just a few songs. Pay attention to what I'm doing here. View more. And last one. <clears throat> so that gives me thirty three levels to work with. And save it. And we're going to exit. And I will be back to show you how to tab that out.